right, well, just to give you a little bit of a background on the rushed in drive, it's, uh, we've come around the corner from the, the Crom River in St. Francis, and there's some lovely formations in the, in the sandbanks here. We're fishing for cob with artificial lures. Uh, this is a perfect light now, so I'm not going to talk too long. But basically, we're fishing sort of 10 and a half rods, uh, 10 and a half foot rods, um, three, four thousand reels, 20 pound braid, you're throwing like a pedal tail as far as you can onto the side of a bank where the water's pushing off. The cob are waiting for there as the, the, the bait fish, the mullet and stuff, wash off those banks. The cob sit there to eat them. So we're fishing just on the edge of a bank here. Uh, like I said, it's perfect timing. The tide's coming in, everything's looking right. Hopefully, you get on with, it, with, it, with some better fish. But hey, I love it. It's even these size, I, lo I love these fish. Unfortunately, there's a kind of a brick in the water. I've lost my second jig head now. I'm gonna go slightly light. I was using a two ounce, now I'm gonna go down to a one ounce. And what it will do is just won't sink as fast. You just want a paddle tail, wind it consistently. You don't have to jerk it, just wind it slowly like a, the, the tail does action. You don't have to work the action. But what it does, when you wind it straight, it keeps that hook proud up. So you still get stuck, but not as much as if you jerk it. But when you jerk it, your jig head does this, and it, it obviously is more inclined to hook up on a rock. I'm gonna run up, up to the hill and uh, try to clear these rocks, okay. Oh my goodness, I have hooked the mother of all cob. Look at this, I want 20 pound braid. This thing is just going. <sighs> I'm nervous, I've cleared up the bank. To get clearance away from the rocks, there's quite a bit of brick in the water. <laughs> my adrenaline is flying through the roof right now. That's 300 meters right there. <laughs> oh. Please turn, fish. Oh no. This fish isn't gonna go. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna have to tap on drag off, man. Oh, he stopped. He stopped. Please stop, fish. Please. Please. <laughs> oh. I have to let my joy not go out in the hope that I can stop this fish, otherwise I'm gonna lose all my braid. Oh, oh, no, I haven't turned. Folks, this is scary stuff, this. There you go. You stopped, pleased. See, folks, always make sure those joy knots are strong enough. I've used the Excella 10 and a half foot Elite. Perfect for this backbone and stuff, but I actually bought the 3,000 instead of a 4,000 cold deer, uh, the Dawa cold deer. Going 20 pound. Oh no! Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I've only just got my line back on now. That was a 30, 40 kilo cob that the hooks just pulled. I cannot tell you how devastated I am right now. I'll be losing lots of sleep over that fish. Oh, that was incredible. I mean, it took, oh, it took 300, 350 meters. And with that slow, big cob, you felt the head nods. It didn't take off fast. It's exactly what I've heard about people that bigger cob here. Yeah. Either the hook opened or it pulled. We'll, we'll soon find out. Well, folks, have a look here. You reef me. You can see that there, he just went over a brick and cut me off. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of scattered rock here. I had a, about a meter and a half leader, and you see that's all I've got left. <laughs> the fish like that, hey, maybe I could have put more pressure. <laughs> Who knows, it's one of those things that's gonna haunt me for a very long time. <laughs> anyway, let me get, get, get another one out there. Ooh. Well, just to put you guys into Relation why I'm an emotional wreck after losing that fish. That was probably 30 40 kilo cob, which I hear you get in this area. Well, everyone knows you do. And this sort of tackle definitely under gun, but there's always a chance. If there was no reef here, you're in with a good chance. But I think with the minor reef you have here, hindsight maybe I should have tightened up more, put more pressure on, but you don't know whether you're going to pop it or pull the hooks. It's just one of those things. Hindsight's a perfect science, but uh, it's just incredible to hook a fish like that. I mean, I literally was winding the McCarthy paddle tail. And it just went st it got stuck. And I thought it was stuck like I have been quite often this evening. And then it just felt the whole fish turn and it just started going. Solid and occasionally head shakes, but just going to the horizon. That was spectacular. 
All right, well, I'm going to carry on. I'm going to persevere, see if I can get on the bite. Okay, guys, I'm going to tell you what we're uh, fishing with here. I'm using a Daiwa Excella Oceana loaded with uh, 12 pound braid. I've got a Daiwa um, 11 foot uh, spinning rod, uh, drop shot rod, a five, five ounce, uh, sorry, five inch uh, white um, pedal tail with a one and a half ounce uh, jig head with 17 pound fluorocarbon. Nice and light. The reason why we're fishing so such light leader was because is because the water has been so clean. So we thought that you know if we fish nice and light, we might uh, get more bites. And uh, we've had a various using various uh, different colours of of uh, drop shot uh, of pedal tails. As long as they got the pedal tail, they'll work. Without the pedal tail, they didn't work. This fish are picking up on the vibrations. And as you uh, and as you can see, uh, it, it's, it's pitch black now. So the, and and. The colour doesn't seem to be making any 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 difference. You are kidding me! That's a brusher! <laughs> Goodness me! It's incredible. <laughs> the camera! <laughs> 